Hey, what's going on dice makers and prospective dice makers? Today we're going to be doing a video on how I do fence supports using Fusion 360. This is a very popular method in the dice making community. However, it's mostly done within the slicer. Isaac Dubeck over in Dice Making Discoveries 2.0 came up with this method in Fusion. I refined it, tweaked it a little bit, and am now presenting it to you. This method is contingent on you already having the STLs for your masters. However, I will leave a link in the description below to a video on how to design your masters using Polydice Generator. So we're going to go ahead and get started first by inserting a mesh into Fusion 360. We're just going to jiggle the mouse a little bit, go to insert, insert mesh. And we're going to go ahead and start off with the D4 because the D4 is a little bit different. Now, once you import the mesh, you have this box on the right. You have these three buttons. Go ahead and click on those three buttons and hit OK. Do not click on the reset button. I just kind of hovered over it. That's going to bring in our actual STL or mesh file. Now, as you see, you cannot manipulate any part of the mesh itself. All you can do is select the entire mesh and look at it, really. So we need to convert it. So we're going to go up here to modify. We're going to convert mesh and hit OK. Now this is done in the mesh workspace. If you notice in the upper toolbar there, there's surface or solid surface mesh sheet metal tools. Make sure you click on mesh, then the modify, then the convert. Now, as you can see, we can select individual items on the solid. It's gone from a mesh to a solid. And this is what we need in order to manipulate the process. Now, once we have it converted, we're going to go up here to solid and we're going to construct a plane through three points. Now, on the D4, you can really select any three points that you like as long as they're all connected on the same side. That's going to create a plane for that side. Now, prior to the last Fusion 360 update, we were able to just move this plane. However, we can't do it anymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the whole plane. We're going to right click and do offset plane. And then we're going to just click and drag this arrow here until we get a good distance away from the actual point that we're going to be using. For this plane, we're going to call this our build plate plane. We're going to go ahead and turn off the visibility for that reference plane. And now we have what is essentially our build plate. We have a point going towards the plane in order to signify the point that's going to be going towards our actual build plate once we 3D print these. This was a little far away, so I just backed it up a little bit. There's really no set difference or set distance, just whatever you think looks good. Once we get that done, we're going to go to Construct, and we're going to do a plane at angle. So go ahead and select whichever dice edge you want to do this for. It really doesn't matter as long as the two planes are able to face each other. You want it to be coming from your plane point up to the far side of the die. And then we're going to rotate this until it gets pretty much even. And it looks as though it's got similar angles on both sides where it actually touches the die. Once we have our two planes, everything looks good. This is the part on the D4 that differs from every other die we do. So we're going to go to Construct, and then we're going to do Axis Perpendicular to Face at Point. That's a mouthful. So we're going to select our Build Plate Point, and we're going to go to the top, and we're going to select any of these sections as long as they're not within a number. All these sections are going to print flat. It, all these lines are just from the triangulations of making the STL file. So we're just going to click on this big one right here. And once we do that, you're going to see we have an axis that is perpendicular to that point going straight through the middle of the die and we're going to hit OK and we're going to give Fusion 360 here a minute to render it. Once that is rendered we're going to go ahead and go up to create sketch and we're going to create a sketch on the angled plane that we created along that dice edge. Make sure that you're clicking the side of the plane that faces our build plate plane. That's super important. If you click on the back side of it, things are going to get wonky. Things are going to get out of whack, or they could. So now that we have the sketch on here, what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in. We're going to go to Create, Slot, Center to Center Slot. Now, once we have that selected, we're going to go and we're going to draw all the way along this dice edge a slot. 
And if you, you can use that red line there for a reference, that is actually the edge of the die. So once we do that, we're going to go ahead and drag it off. I like to make this at 0.5 millimeters. And as you can see, it extends a little past the die. So we're going to click on the center reference point, hit M for move, slide it up just a little bit. Now this doesn't have to be perfectly even. It can extend a little bit, but you don't want it to be too far up the die. And you want to check that other edge just to make sure everything is where it's supposed to be. Now we're going to do another sketch on our build plate plane here. We're just going to go ahead and click on that. Select the plane or planar face. Um, now again, make sure that you're clicking on the right side, the side that's actually facing the die. Then we're going to cl click on the edge of the die, the absolute middle, middle of that slot. We're going to hit S to bring up search. We're going to type in project and we're going to project that center line onto our new sketch. Okay. Super important. You make sure you do the center line. Then we're going to do another center to center slot right here. And we're going to set this one at one millimeter. Then we're just going to hit finish sketch. Now what we're going to do is take a look, make sure everything's clean, make sure everything's lined up. We're going to go to create loft. Then we're going to select the first profile, then we're going to, which is the dice edge, and we're going to select the build plate. And there is the first fin support. Once we have this all set, it's super easy to create the rest of them. We're just going to create pattern, circular pattern, then make sure this is set to bodies. Sometimes it'll default to faces, but make sure it's set to bodies. For object select, make sure you click and drag from right to left in Fusion, and that will select that whole first fin. Then we're gonna select that axis we made, and just like that, we have a fully supported D4 with fin supports. Much quicker, much easier than attempting to do this in your slicer. After this, you're just gonna come up here, you're gonna hit save, save it within fusion 360 you have to save it in order to export it i'm not going to do that here because i've already done it but go ahead save it and then once you have it saved go back up to export title it i typically just do like d4 hit this menu go down to stl and then choose where you want to save it on your pc this does have cloud translation so you will need an internet connection to do this but once you get it started it's going to convert it into an STL. It's going to save it on your computer. And while that's converting, we can actually hop into a new workspace and we're going to start on a D8. So the D8 is probably the simplest one to show this process on, but the process is exactly the same across the board. You're not going to really have to deviate too much from this. So we're just going to come in. We're going to choose the wrong option. Then we're going to choose the right one. We're going to go insert mesh. We're going to bring in our D8. We're going to hit open. Now we're going to hit those top three buttons over on the insert mesh box. We're then going to remember to convert our mesh. Again, I click on the wrong thing because I'm going a little fast because it's now four o'clock in the morning. So we're going to convert mesh, select the mesh, hit OK. That's going to convert. And then again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do the construct plane with three points. So we'll go up to construct. Go to plane through three points. You can select any three points. Just keep in mind which point you want to be your build plate point. For me here, as just as a demonstration, it doesn't really matter. But as long as you don't select three points on the same face, you're going to be fine. Once we get that done, we're going to go ahead and we're going to offset the plane. If you select three points that are on the same face, the plane is going to run with that face of the die. So now we're going to hit offset plane. We're going to drop it. That'll give us our build plate plane with a build plate point as well. Just hit OK. We're going to go ahead and hide that reference plane. And then we're going to go in and we're going to do the construct plane at angle. Again, selecting one of those nice sharp edges. And then we're just going to turn it a little bit until it looks like it's where it's supposed to be. We're not quite there yet, so we're going to keep turning it a bit. Once I figure out how to line up the view the way that I want it. And once we get this lined up, we're going to do the exact same thing that we did on the D4. Um, except the one big change here is the axis. So we're going to axis, but this time we're going to do axis through two points. You're going to select the top point. You're going to select that build plate point, and you're going to hit OK. This is the only difference between a, 
a, a standard D4 and everything else, uh, with the exception of an infinity D4, or D3, or something like that. Now we're going to do the exact same process. We're going to do our two sketches. The first one here is going to be the slot along the dice edge. And again, we're going to keep this at 0.5 millimeter. All of these are 0.5 millimeter on the dice edge and then one millimeter on the build plate plane. Uh, so once we get this going, we're just going to type in 0.5. Again, it kind of goes a, a little too far for my taste, so I'm just going to back it up here. And then we're going to finish sketch. Then yet again, we're going to do a build plate plane sketch down here we're going to select the middle point of that slot hit search type in project and then we're going to project that dice edge down onto the build plate then again we're going to do a slot center to center draw that out make it one millimeter hit ok hit finish sketch and then we're going to create another loft and again, same thing here. We're just going to select the first profile, select the second profile. That's going to create our first fence support. Now we're going to do, yet again, pattern, circular pattern. Again, making sure it's on bodies. We're going to select the body. We're going to select the axis. Now here it's set to three. So it's making a pattern of three, which as you can tell is not going to work for a D8. It just isn't. So we're going to change it to four. Once we change it to four, we're good to go. Make sure that your pattern number matches the number of edges. And then again, you're going to want to save this in Fusion 360, then you're going to want to export it to your PC and you'll be all set. Next, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the rest of the dice. So here's a D6. For doing the plane on a D6, it's a little bit different. Um, we're going to go ahead and convert the mesh. Come on, you can find it. There it is. Um, once we convert the mesh, we're going to take a look at doing that plane through three points. And again, if you select three points that are on the same face, it's not going to work. If you select two points that are on the same face, it's not going to work. There it is, all three on the same face. You just get a plane that runs with that. If we take that one back, we move it up here, we get the same thing. If we drop it down to the bottom, we get a plane that bisects the die but it doesn't give us a point it just gives us a couple of edges and that's not what we want so we're going to move one across and then we're going to move one down and it still bisects on edges and not points so we're going to go to a point and then it's going to chop it right where we need it and that gives us two options to use for our build plate point and where we're going to set our build plate plane so again we're just going to offset plane um, and then we're going to mess it up a little bit, but then we're going to get it right. We're going to offset plane. We're going to slide it right out. And that's going to give us our build plate plane where we're going to do our sketches and we're going to again do the slots. Everything's exactly the same as we did on the D8. It's just a different shape. Um, next up, I'm going to show the D10. The D10 is a little bit different. In that it has it's not a standard or a normal polyhedron or polyhedral shape uh, you notice going around the middle you have low points and high points so if you pick a low point a high point and a low point I forgot to convert it here so I'm just gonna go ahead and convert that now but if you pick a low point a high point and a low point you're gonna have the plane running against the face of the die so you want to make sure you're picking the same point positions. Uh, here I'm going to pick the low, high, low and show you what that looks like. That's not what we want. Okay. So now I'm just going to move this one to another low point so that we have low, low, low. And that's going to create the plane where we want it. We're then going to offset that plane, which is then going to give us our build plate plane. And we're going to be able to continue on doing our supports just like we did on the D4 and the D8 uh, using the axis through two points, running it between the build plate point and the top point. Super effective, super easy, super quick. Now we're going to do the D12. The D12 and the D20 are very similar, 
but we're going to go ahead and show both just so that you can get an idea of what you're going to be looking at when you go through this process. So again, convert the mesh. That gives us the solid body to work with. And when you're working with the D12, what you want to do is pick your build plate point, and then we're going to run the edges. So we're going to start with build plate point. Then we're going to go from that point up the edge, net back to the point, up the edge, back to the point, up the edge. And that's going to give us the three points we need in order to make the build plate plane. Again, offset this, do the axis, uh, excuse me, do the plane on angle, then do the axis through two points, and you're all set. On that one, on the D12, make sure that you're set to, um, your pattern is set to three. And then on the D20, it's all the same process, except you want to make sure that your pattern is set to five, okay? This is the quickest way I found to do the fin supports. Doing them in Chitu Box takes forever. I got this entire set supported in under half an hour, and that includes going through Chitu Box. But here we're just doing the build plate point, follow the edge, build plate point, follow the edge till we get three. Now we have the plane where we want it, and we have the build plate point. We're going to be able to offset this, do the axis, do the plane at angle then carry on with the slots and the loft. Super, super, super duper simple. Now we're gonna bring all those dice into Chitu Box. And right here, I'm kind of speeding things up a bit because, well, nobody really wants to see me go through and do all this. But in order to orient the dice properly, I always do flatten by face there on the left. Uh, and then I choose the vertex where the fins all come together in order to make sure that they are sitting completely flat. Once I get them in a nice, neat pattern, I'll then go to supports. I add the raft to make sure that I'm able to get them off the build plate easier. And then Chitu Box now does this thing where it highlights your islands. So just go through, check all your numbers, make sure that you get all your islands, you get all your supports in. Um, sometimes it'll do funny things with the supports. You're just going to have to kind of mess around with them a little bit. As you notice here in this video, again, it is still at like 500% speed, but you'll see that on some of the flat faces, especially on the D20 and the D12 and the underside of that crystal D4 are points that show islands. Those aren't islands. Don't do any supports on flat faces. It'll be fine. Just go through, get all of your numbers supported, nice and pretty. And then we're gonna go back over and slice them. Now for this part, I did reduce it back to real time. This is slicing in real time, and then it's all good to go. You save it to your flash drive or your printer medium, throw it in your printer. You have a new set of masters in a few hours, and that's really all there is to it. Um, super simple, super effective. Thank you so much for coming and checking out the video. Make sure you like and subscribe for part three to see how we do support removal.